about Holy Ghost power. It takes Holy Ghost to make a man live right. It takes Holy Ghost for a woman to forgive. Are you hear what I'm saying? It takes the Spirit of God moving upon and influencing a heart to cause us to live the way God wants us to live. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. And uh, you don't know what to expect when the Spirit begins to move upon you, but it's all good. It's really all good. And we were created for his purpose right amen. amen as been said this is resurrection sunday hallelujah hallelujah the oldest the, the oldest and the most important christian celebration amen that celebrates hallelujah and I, you're right it is the the, mo the oldest and the most important celebration Jesus rose from the dead you, you may not you may you may not grasp but when you look at all the religions not one of them can say that their founder and leader rose from the dead never to die again hallelujah glory to God hallelujah and he's alive today in his spirit his life his power is here today hallelujah 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 glory to god hallelujah 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 and like the apostle said and we are witnesses of this resurrection power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you. I tell you. There's certain things that he put upon my heart. It is not the traditional message. All right. But look at. Would you look at somebody. Say, it's still all right. As long as it's the will of God. Amen. All right. You all, I'm sure you've heard up to this point all about his wonderful resurrection life that is flowing in the midst of us now. Jesus is alive. Amen. And he wants us to expect from him yes. constantly. Yes. And the Lord put, he said four things that he said to me today that this was his interest. One, he said, is the need... Let me get the right one here. Is the need for every true believer to be filled with his Holy Spirit. The need for every one of his people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You remember the day of Pentecost. Jesus told them, basically, you can't do no service. He says, you tarry here in Jerusalem. Wait here in Jerusalem until 
you be endued with power from where? On high. On high. That was the assignment that he gave them. After in Luke, he breathed on them and says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then they had to wait in Jerusalem. And uh, that was for the day of Pentecost. That's what the tearing was about. All right? Waiting for the day of Pentecost. And so when that day came, then you know the story. But that's the first thing he mentioned. The second thing he mentioned was this. The need for those who once have had the experience of baptism in the Holy Spirit to be filled continually. So if you've been filled with the Spirit, but, you know, you're not experiencing that fullness of walking in the Spirit, God want to fill you, refill you today, and you walk out of this place, and you walk in that Spirit, the, the being filled with the Spirit. Do you still want it? Anybody still want it? <laughs> it's very, very important. Now, I want us to cooperate with God today, because God, God, God time is short, and it's really serious times. I mean it's serious time. And I'm on TV. I have some things I can't say and I'll just pass it but they're serious. They're very serious times. So it is very important that we really tune into what God wants and flow with him. The third thing he mentioned is this. The need for the sick to be healed. If you're sick in your body this is what God wants you to know. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you sick. He wants you well. Now don't do like many times people do. Start reasoning. Well, you know, people get sick for a whole lot of reason. That's fine. But just today, let's cooperate with God. Is that all right? God wants the sick bodies to be healed. Sick of disease. Now, I'm not saying that... that, that these sick bodies will be healed, but I'm revealing to you what the Lord gave to me, the Holy Spirit. And the last thing that he gave to me, he said, the need to forgive. These are four things that the Lord gave me. I, I, and, and, and I know enough to know that sometimes God don't go the tr traditional route. God is serious. He's a good, good God, and he wants to just pour out his love and his healing power, his power to fill his people and so that we can be the lights and the examples that he called us to be. This world need a witness, saints. You know the world don't respect the church like they used to? Because of the lack of the character, the holiness, and the power and the love of God. They don't respect the church. People get hurt in the church. They leave. And sometimes they're out for years and before they ever come back. But saints look at somebody and say, that ought not to be. God wants us to be genuine. Real. So the first thing, I'm just going to go through these here. And I'm not going, I, I want to just share a few scriptures here. I want you to bear with me. And uh, I just want to allow him to do whatever he Wants to do. And if we agree with him, heaven's going to be happy, all right? The need, first of all, it is very important that we understand that when we get saved, when we or believe that we ardently or earnestly seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his apostles, don't go nowhere. Don't try to do my service and work. Till you be endued with power from on high. Because the, the host that we wrestle against is this day and time. They are spiritual. And the work that is to be done is spiritual, right? All right, now let's look at a few scriptures right fast. I'm not going to, like I said, I want to. I want you to look at Genesis chapter 12. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read these. I'm going to let the scripture do the talking. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12. Are you there, anybody? 
Look, let's, let's look what it says. Now the Lord. Now the Lord had said unto Abram. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that curseth thee. And look at this verse. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. Now I want you to go to Galatians chapter 3. This is the promise that he made, right? To Abraham, the man of God. Galatians 3. Are you there? All right. Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on the tree. Now, I'm going to read 13 again, the first part. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Gentiles with all those that were non-Jews at the time, everybody. That, ye, that we might receive what? The promise of the Spirit through faith. All right? That's how it comes, through faith, believing. All right? Turn with me, Acts chapter 2. All right. You there? All right, verse 38, 37, Peter had just preached to the people. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift. Somebody say give. Yeah. Gift of the Holy Ghost. It means you can't earn it. All right. Verse 39. For or because the promise. Somebody say promise. promise. Is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. All right, Acts chapter 2, verse 4 says, no, verse 1, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. He is a gift. You simply believe and receive. Are you with me? This is for everybody. It's not for a faithful few, not for a few intellectuals. It's for everyone that believe. The Lord said to me, he said, he emphasized the need for every true believer to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's got a purpose. The times is getting rough, all right? And uh, it, it, I don't, like I said, there's, I'm on the air, so... There's so much I can say. Um, but my experience has been that the Lord always prepares us. And as we listen closely to him, we will be prepared for the things 
But it's so important. Listen, so if you are not filled today, please don't take offense. But you start right away believing God. Lord, your word is there. I want what you want me to have. Because you know what it takes to walk this walk. You know what it takes to live a life of service, to do service. You know what it takes to stand against the evil forces. You know what it takes. But you equip us with your divine power. So that's... That's what he said. Now, that's number one. And we should know this about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the promised blessing of Abraham. God promised Abraham, all right? And we are heirs of the promise, right? Since we're heirs of the promise, that means we inherit the promises, right? Holy Spirit, the promise, the Holy Spirit is the promise. That God spoke to Abraham and he spoke to Joel. In the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will do what? Young men will dream dreams and old men or young men see vision and, young, and old men dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaids. In other words, I'm pouring my divine life, my Holy Spirit upon everyone that will receive him. And that's what God wants to do. I wonder if you can just stop and give God some praise right now. God, I thank you. This is your purpose. This is your purpose. This is your purpose. All right, one other scripture before I leave this, this first thing. Isaiah 32. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read just uh, uh, starting in verse 9. If you're there, say amen. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall, be, ye, shall ye be troubled, you careless women, for the vintage shall fail. The gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, you careless ones. Strip you and make you, make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your lawns. They shall lament for the tears, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come upon thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken. The multitude of the city shall be left. The forts and towers shall be for dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of, fe- of flocks. Until, somebody say until, Until. the spirit be poured upon us from where? All right. And the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. This is when the change will come. When the spirit, he said, is poured upon us from on high. And Joel said the same thing. And then, uh, but we just read that that day has already come (coughs) where the spirit Is being poured out upon us from on high. And the day of Pentecost was the beginning of that very thing happening. So, why? Why? Because the Spirit of God is God. Right? And so the Spirit of God helps us to live right. Go with me. The Spirit of God enables us to live in a manner that we cannot in our own strength do. Do. So this is important. Now the second thing is this. He said. The need. For those that were filled. Or once had the experience and been filled with the spirit. Or speaking in tongues now. To be. Refilled. And walk in that. Fullness of the Spirit. He said the need for those. Now, so that includes you and I, right? Those that have been filled. You know, let me say it like that. Now, look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, he says... Let's 
And Wednesday night, uh, the man of God talked about, see that we work, walk circumspectly, right? Yeah. Okay, aware of our surroundings. Watchful. Redeeming the time because the days are what? Now, that was years ago, but the days now are really evil. I mean, you don't, it doesn't take much to look on the news now and see what's going on. And you can be in despair if you don't hope in God, right? Wherefore, be ye not, understand, but under, not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Then the quote, verse 18 says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. Now, don't be intoxicated. In other words, when wine comes, it intoxicates us. It, it takes over and it gives us a high. It gives us, uh, uh, people say things when they're intoxicated that they didn't have the courage to say otherwise. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So, but, the, but on the flip side of that, there's a spiritual intoxication. There's a spiritual influence by the Spirit of God. Don't be intoxicated. Don't be influenced by wine, but rather be filled with the Spirit. Now, they had a, they had a, a habit. These, these pagans, pagans had a habit of, of being intoxicated, so they could relate very well to what he was saying. And some of us can relate too, right? But he said, but be filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. Now, when we're filled with the Spirit, he tells us how, and he, t- he can show us some of the results of it too. Now, look here. He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, this is a form of worship in the Lord, right? Giving thanks always for all things. This is a thankful heart, right? And, and the Father, uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another. You see that? And so there's, there's three, three areas that uh, relationships, uh, peaceful relationships, are very important. He mentioned uh, the marriage, the family, and work. Three areas where peaceful relationships is very important. So it takes being constantly filled with the Spirit. You, you can't do this because you just want to, right? It takes more than willpower. This is not willpower we're talking about. This is talking about Holy Ghost power. It takes Holy Ghost to make a man live right. It takes Holy Ghost for a woman to forgive. Well, you hear what I'm saying? It takes the Spirit of God moving upon and influencing a heart to cause us to live the way God wants us to live. So Now, I've been filled with the Spirit. But I'm a, I'm, I, I, I had an experience this week that I got mad. I mean mad, mad. But the Lord made me see some things. He made me see. It's like, he said, you have to walk in this spirit. Be filled. And there are some things... When you're filled with the Spirit, never bother you at all. Getting quiet in here. But now if you are not, if I'm not filled with the Spirit, a whole lot of things will bother me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I could have had the experience first. I could have had the experience, baptized, and and still speak in tongues. But I may not necessarily... Certainly be filled to overflowing because maybe I'm not worshiping God constantly. Maybe I'm not really grateful to God. Or, or maybe I'm not submitting to others as I should. Or, or you know what I'm saying? Um, but, but whatever it is, uh, maybe my prayer time, whatever the maybes be. But what I'm, the point that I'm trying to make is this here. I might not be filled to overflowing. But you can tell when a person is filled to overflowing. Man, it doesn't take but a few seconds. You talk to them, boy, they're, and they're thanking the Lord. A few seconds, just th- you don't have to talk, but a few seconds, and they're filled to overflowing, rejoicing, and giving thanks to the Lord. You know, and, and, and but what happens is there's an alertness and there's a strength from the Spirit, and there's a provision by God the Spirit that we won't have if we don't be filled with the Spirit. It's okay to tell people, I've been filled, uh, uh, I got filled, and I spoke in tongues years ago, but what is, what is it like now? Am I filled to overflowing? Um, am I happy in God? Am I great? to the Lord can I sing with a joyful heart are you hearing what I'm saying then if I, if I but because the because the Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness peace 
and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's an evidence of my being filled to overflowing. You know what I'm saying? Am I happy in God? Am I joyful in the midst of the things that I'm going through? You see, so, so God said at this hour, it's really, really, really critical that his people, those that have been filled once, um, not only to just refer back to the experience, but to walk in it, to walk in the spirit now. And that's when the supernatural, you're going to see more of the supernatural and people are going to be able to identify you more now. As children of God, because by this shall all men know you're mine, you're my disciples. So it's important. So I want you to think with me. If you need to be refilled with the Spirit, and in the days of old, they, they didn't just stop with just one experience. Remember when they faced some opposition, they all came together. And they begin to pray, and they pray, God, grant to us boldness. In other words, boy, these people are threatening us, so we need some boldness. And they got ready to pray, and then the Bible said the Holy Spirit came again, and they were all filled. The place was shaken, and they were all filled again. You know what I'm saying? Come on, let's give God some praise. We need it. When we come together, we start worshiping God, if we really let go, and let God, then God can heal us right where we're standing. God can heal those conditions in our bodies. And you see, God works miracles when we praise him. And so, you, have you seen how he's been laboring to get us to praise him? I mean, he's literally been laboring to get us to praise him because God knows that in that atmosphere, the devil is stifled. He is stifled. He cannot do what he want to do in your life and my life. So, uh, it's so now, so he wants us to be filled. So we want us uh, uh, to be filled so that we can walk with God. And uh, let, me, let me give you another scripture here. what he's saying. Look at the Colossians chapter 1 right fast. Colossians chapter 1 says, Verse 9, for this cause, I, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, spiritual insight, that so that ye might walk worthy of the Lord to all please. I can't please him if I don't know how to please him, right? Stop. 